Today on Engineering Newswire, we're learning that rocket science is actually pretty hard. Flying terrified in a windowless plane and bringing new life to Franken eyes. I recently returned from a tour of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This is where some of the most important rocket guts are designed, developed, and installed. Like the forthcoming SLS rocket that will, hopefully, end up taking people to Mars. It's pretty cool. But on my way home, literally in flight between Alabama and Wisconsin, NASA's Cygnus supply vessel and the Antares rocket propelling it exploded just off the pad in Virginia. This was a resupply mission for the International Space Station, so nobody was aboard the exploding spacecraft, but it was a pretty spectacular sight. Got main engines at 108%. AVI powered on. Actually, this rocket was from a private company, Orbital Sciences. Interestingly enough, Elon Musk, CEO of the company's competitor, SpaceX, said that the Antares was a bad design nearly two years ago. Investigators are looking into the causes of the mishap and haven't yet ruled out the possibility of a malfunction with the Russian-built modified engines. Orbital Sciences did have an insurance policy valued at more than $200 million, and the ISS astronauts do have enough supplies to last through the spring. NASA will be doing a test launch of the Orion module in December, sending the new craft around the moon. Without the use of the SLS just yet, NASA may want to reconsider using an Antares. Orion would be an extremely expensive fireworks show. So as if I'm not already afraid enough of flying, one company wants to remove all of the windows, which although I generally close while I'm curled up pretending I'm elsewhere, I still appreciate as my only glimpse into the world outside. But how will I hide from this gigantic window? Your journey, your way. The technology is being developed by UK-based company, the Center for Process Innovation. Using a continuous roll-to-roll -roll process, the company says the OLED screens could be embedded into the fuselage lining panels. And while the flexible displays may be nice for seat backs, others have expressed similar concerns about the virtual window concept. I mean, will it always be sunny skies? What if there is a technical glitch? And I can only imagine the potential for advertising. Ugh, and motion sickness. The design calls for a series of externally mounted cameras that would give flyers an uninterrupted view of the exterior. Internal tracking cameras could also be used to project the images onto a screen from the point of view of the passenger. And a simulated sunrise and sunset could help passengers adjust to time zones on long flights. The company thinks they could achieve a color resolution of 150 dpi, a luminance of 100 candelas per square meter, and 20,000 hours of use before replacement. And although they claim that everyone wins with weight and subsequent fuel savings, which also means fewer carbon emissions, I do not win. Nope. A group of student interns and engineers at NASA recently built custom aircrafts by repurposing surplus unmanned aerial vehicles. The project demonstrated the ability to quickly and cheaply modify existing aircraft for specific missions. The prototype aircrafts were constructed using parts from Aerovironment RQ-14 Dragon Eye UAVs that NASA received from the U.S. Marine Corps. The tiny electric aircrafts weigh only 5.9 pounds, have a 3.75 foot wingspan and twin motors, and can carry a one pound instrument payload for up to an hour. The team of interns from universities across the country spent the summer modifying these Dragon Eyes by taking parts from other Dragon Eyes along with using specially designed 3D printed parts. They named their newly created aircrafts Franken-Eyes. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Ah, 
I get it. The team's goal was to increase payload capacity and endurance for use in Earth science missions. After designing longer, more slender wings and dual fuselages, they began printing new parts including wing sections, nose cones, winglets, control surfaces, wing ribs, and propellers. The 3D printed wing sections were then reinforced using carbon fiber tubing or aluminum rods. These alterations allow the Franken eyes to fly up to three times longer than dragon eyes. Although, who do you think would win in a fight? A dragon or Frankenstein? Yesterday, at the Pioneers Festival in Austria, Aeromobile, a Slovakian startup, unveiled a flying car. A concept that has been in the works for the past 25 years, the Aeromobile 3.0 can transform from a car to an airplane within seconds. Powered by a Rotex 912 engine and using regular gasoline, the vehicle can reach speeds of more than 124 miles per hour in the sky with a range of 430 miles and 100 miles per hour on land, traveling up to 540 miles at a time. To take off, the vehicle must reach 90 miles per hour and only requires a few hundred meters of runway. It is constructed with a steel frame and a carbon fiber coating and it fits two people. It even includes an advanced parachute deployment system and a variable angle of attack of the wings, which significantly shortens the takeoff requirements and also allows for landings on rough terrain within reason. Not within reason, as we can all probably imagine, is the price tag, which although yet to be announced, is a number most of us could probably only imagine. Or not even imagine. But hey, it's a flying car. Do you have store ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Melissa Fossbender and this has been your Engineering Newswire. <laughs> <laughs>